So, Canva, the gift that keeps on giving, has given us freehand drawing. That's right, freehand drawing has come to Canva in the latest release. Uh, so basically what they've done is they've added some basic tools that allow us to do freehand drawing inside of Canva, and the good news is, it's for the free and the paid version. So come on, let's go check it out. Now, those of you who've been around for a little while know that Canva is one of my all-time favorite tools. And they've gone and they've done it again. They have released an update, and this time they're giving us the ability to do free hand drawing. Now, previously, you've been able to select assets from their library or upload assets from your, your own library that look like hand-drawn, but now you can actually do hand-drawn things yourself, which is really amazing and exciting. The, there, there's a couple of caveats, bleh, um, and the first of which is that this is basic, right? This is the initial release. This has just come out, and as usual, like they're going to make it better as they go along, but I just want to cover a couple of basics that you need to know right now when I'm recording this in December 2021, which is, first of all, that right now it's only available on desktop and on the website, so it's not going to work on your mobile app yet. It will come. It, it, it's definitely on its way. Um, the other thing is that it is basic tools, right? So let, let, I want to keep the expectations realistic here. Murphy wants to keep the expectations there too. If you're not familiar with Murphy's my dog. Um, so it's, it's basic tools. It's a couple of, it's one, two, it's four different pens, four, and you can adjust the size and transparency and the color, that type of thing. Um, but there's not really a whole lot else. Okay. There's an eraser. I won't, I won't leave you hanging on that. Uh, but it's enough to get us started, right? And they will, of course, add two things at, over time. And then there's a couple other little quirky things, um, which I'll show you as we get into it. But basically, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start off showing you how to get yourself set up so that you can use these tools. It's really easy. Um, and again, it's on the free or the paid version. So lots to be excited about there. And then I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how you can use it just real quick, real rough, nothing super fancy. One of the things I love about Canva is you don't have to be an artist to turn out things that you are completely happy to use and other people will be impressed by. Sound good? All right, so let's jump in. Um, for those of you who are maybe new here, um, my name is Kathleen. I'm here as your tech coach. The short version of the story is technology is my day gig. It's also my hobby. So I live in this world, which means it's easier for me to stay on top of all the things that are changing um, than people who have a real life. <laughs> Uh, but because of that, my friends, my neighbors, my coworkers, um, they all come to me when they have questions or when they need help with something, when they're not sure. Not everybody has that in their world, so I'm here for you. You can always reach out and ask questions. Uh, you can jump into the comments and let me know if there's something that you want more information on. Um, don't be shy. There's no such thing as a dumb answer. Nobody is bored knowing this stuff. I'm here to help. All right, let's get into the goodies. So like I said, we're going to start off doing this um, from scratch. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to go through my examples in the paid version just because I have it here and it's handy, but I will prove to you that it is also in the free version by, by switching over to that later on. Okay. All right. Murphy, you're going to have to wait, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> you always fix the worst time. All right. So let's get ourselves situated here. Um, I do need to just bring it up. Okay. And we will go to this one. Here I am down here. All right, so this is my paid Canva account, and this is running in the desktop app. Like I said, this is working right now in the desktop app and the browser, not on mobile. It's going to come later, we're sure. All right, so you're just gonna go in and get started as you usually do. What is wrong, Murphy? You're gonna have to wait, sweetie. I swear I just let him out. All right, so we're gonna come in and we're just gonna start with a design. So we're gonna say create a design. And let's do, oh, let's do an Instagram. We're not going here yet. Let's do an Instagram post. Alrighty. And let's say we're feeling like we're going to go for a bike ride. It's a good goal. <laughs> All right. So you've got your art, but you're feeling like you want to jazz it up a little bit, right? So this is another case of, um, Canva providing us extra functionality uh, through their apps and integrations. So you're going to come down here to more if it's not already showing up here on the side. All right. And you can see apps and integration. Now you can just scroll through here if you'd like to go and find it. Um, but you can also just come up here and type draw and it will come up. Um, oh, here, little little extra free tip here. Something else that's been added. 
We won't cover this now, but we will cover this later. But direct access to Google Photos, we're going to have some fun with that later. But for now, let's stay focused. There's a lot in this new version, um, but we'll just start off with the drawing tool. Okay, so we're going to say draw. And all you have to do if you've never done this before, um, it's really easy to add their apps and integrations. You just click on it. There's a little explanation here of what it is, and you can click through this to kind of get a feel for what the uh, user interface is going to look like. And then you can just come down here and say use. There you go. You're all set. So like I said, we've got the four pens here, and you can change the size, the transparency, and the color. So let me just show you real quick what this looks like. Um, just for reference, let me just show you. Um, when I'm doing this on the desktop, I use my Wacom tablet. Uh, for this demo, I'm on my uh, Surface Pro, which is over here. Uh, so I'm going to use that stylus because I am a stylus person. You do not have to be. You can do this with your finger if you have a touch screen. Um, you can do this with a mouse. Um, I have a friend who is an amazing artist who tried the tablets and hated them, and he does everything with his mouse. Um, personally, it makes my wrist hurt to think about it, but it works for him. So whatever tool works for you, keep using that. You don't have to change anything just because you want to use this new tool, this new fun fun tool. Okay, so here we go. So you've said, oh, let's say you've created, now we're just taking stock one here. Um, you would obviously adjust this for your own purposes, but let's just say, you know, you wanted, to, you, you've got this set up, you made your changes to it. Now you're like, I just want to add a little something to it. So I'm going to just show you real quick what the different pens look like so you can kind of get a feel for it. So we're going to select the pen. All right, and then you just, you can use the sliders or you can put a number in to change the, the size. And you can see here how that's like pulsating. That's because I'm moving the slider. So that's giving you an idea for how big it's going to be. Uh, so here we'll go big just to start with. Transparency at 100 means that it's going to be completely visible. And then as you slide this down, it's going to become less, less visible, more transparent. And we're going to pick a color. Okay. So let's say we're going to come in here. Now, obviously this is not what you're going to do, but just to give you a feel for what that looks like. Um, but then if I decide to bring that down, you know, if you wanted it to be thinner, oops, didn't get the color. Okay. So that's what that looks like. We'll say done. Oops. And delete. All right. So let's take a look at the marker now, just so you get a feel for what that looks like. Again, the size will change down here and the transparency. Let me make that big so you can see it. And then the transparency. Now that's just showing you that dot is not actually what you're drawing. That's just showing you what your, what your pen point, your nub, whether that's the mouse, your finger, whatever, what that size that's going to be. So that's a little bit big. So let's do this. So this is the marker. It's a, not, for me, there's not a huge difference between the marker and the pen because you can adjust the size, but I'm sure over time they're going to add textures and that kind of stuff to it because that's generally what you're going to expect with this kind of stuff. Um, and then if you decide, nah, you know what, I didn't really like that, um, you can just cancel. Whoops, let's go back to that, please. Thank you. All right, let's check out the glow pen. This is the one I've been playing with the most, to be perfectly honest, just because it's kind of cool looking. So again, it's the same. You can size and transparency. Let me make sure I got the color. So it kind of gives sort of a, a neonish effect. Uh, you know, a real artist would find something better to do. But just I'm just trying to show you the pens right now. So there's that. And then, of course, there's the highlighter, which works like you would expect a highlighter to work. Um, but again, you can change the size and the transparency. Now. This is where I want to show you something that's a little bit quirky in this right now. Again, we're in early days or even listing it as a beta. Um, but right now, okay, if I leave this as it is and I say done, most of us who have used graphic tools before are going to be like, ah, you know, I didn't really like the way that neon came out. I want to change it. Well, this is all one piece. And you'll notice that there's no, like I can say edit image, but it's, that's what's happening is it's treating the drawing as an image. So I can't go back in and decide that I want to change the color of the glow or the color of the highlighter that I did. The only way to do that right now is to delete it and start over. So if I decided that, you know, I didn't like that highlighter, if I decided that I liked the highlighter better, maybe as a green, you have to come back in here and, and select it. The other thing that you probably noticed, let me just draw something else here so you can see it. Here we'll do red and you say done is that this is treating it as a single piece. So however many things you draw at once with, and don't hit done, 
that's going to treat it as one thing. Now, you know, that makes it easy if you just wanted to like resize it or reposition it. You know, let's say you want to put it you know, right here on the tire. I'm such a big artist. Can you tell? Um, so from that standpoint, it's kind of helpful, but we have asked them to revisit that because it is not the way that it's not the patterns that we're used to seeing in a graphics tool. So I have a sneaking suspicion that it will evolve over time, but I just want you to be aware of that. So basically right now, if you wanted to do different things, you're going to want to do it in different pieces. So like if you wanted to do this, then you say done. And then if you wanted to do something else in red, like let's say you wanted to do an arrow. Oops, make sure you've got everything selected. Okay, and then say done. Because then when you do that, while you still can't edit them, they are individual pieces. Give me the piece, thank you. So I can reposition it or I could delete an individual item. Like if I decided, oh wait, I didn't want that to be that color, I wanted that to be red. So that's the other, it's a little bit of a adjustment in your workflow. But once you get into the rhythm of it, it's certainly functional. Like you can do this, you can work with it this way. It's just not what we're used to, right? So the trick is if you want to do this and you want them to all stay separate while well, you can't go back and edit them, but if you want to have the flexibility of being able to reposition, resize, even delete individual pieces that you've hand drawn, you need to keep going back and hitting this done because that treats it as a new element, a new layer that you can then just go around and resize and adjust to a certain degree. Now, the other thing that you can do with this, which is I think pretty cool, is you can select this and do, here, let's maybe move this to doing in Canva with images. You can do here. So you can select the thing that like the circle I just drew and you can say animate and pop. Now, obviously if you're doing a still image, that's not going to be useful, but if you're doing this for some sort of animated um, piece for social media or whatever, um, it is sort of handy to have this. Tumble doesn't seem to work. That's probably because of the shape. So you can absolutely go in and, and play with these. If you decide you don't like them, you can always go back and just set it to none. But so those options are here as well. What else did I want to tell you? The grouping animations. Okay. So that's, that's basically it. So, so uh, you can do the other things too, that you can, you know, the, the editing that you're used to doing. Um, so like you can crop it, you can flip it. So you do have a certain amount of changes that you can make to it. You just have to think about them. You know, you got to think about it a little bit differently, right? So if you wanted to apply that to it, you could do that. So all of these tools, you know, and all of these effects that you're used to having and the ones that they keep adding for us, um, you can go ahead and apply those. And that actually kind of works for this, right? Kind of that shredding thing. I'm not a big biker, but I have friends who are. <laughs> I pick up some of the lingo along the way. So you do have all that functionality there. Um, and it's it's really just limited to your creativity. You can play around with it, you know, like anything else we can. But if you don't like it, you don't have to save it or you can undo it. So you're all good there. So we are covered on that level. Um, OK, so, yeah, so I talked about you can't edit, you can't group it. So just checking my notes here. So let's come back for a second. So. This is pretty functional, right? For out of the gate. Um, there's, this is the kind of things, how would you use this, right? This is the kind of thing that because most of the tools we use are prepackaged to a certain degree, right? They all tend to encourage you to line things up and position things very precisely and all that. And that's great, right? Because these tools, particularly Canva, makes it easy for those of us who are not graphic design people to create things that not only are we're not embarrassed by, but we're actually proud of, right? And that people can't tell that we didn't hire somebody to go and do. So that's really nice. The other side of that coin is that sometimes everything starts to feel a little the same, right? So this adding of hand-drawn element, whether it's a hand-drawn, you know, te words, text that you're doing, um, which you can kind of do with a font, but it's never the same feel as actually hand drawing it yourself. Um, being able to add like, you know, those arrows and lines and squigglies that aren't the prepackaged ones, the ones that actually have that feel, it's a, it's a nuanced thing. 
the brain recognizes the ones that have been created programmatically and the ones that have been done by a human. And it responds to the human because we are human. So that's where this kind of thing can take a otherwise prepackaged kind of feel and add a little spice to it and help it pop out from all the other things that everybody is seeing on a regular basis. So that's why you wanna to try to do these kinds of things. It's like anything else, you don't wanna to get too carried away with it in general. Um, but by adding these, it's a little seasoning that you add to the art that you are creating. I'm mixing my metaphors here, but you get what I'm saying. Now, because we are in the holiday season when I'm recording, so I'm recording this in, in December 2021. So this has just come out. This is all going to change. It's going to get better. Uh, so do keep an eye out for it. Right now it says beta on it. When you see that beta label go away, that'll probably mean that they're adding more features to it. So, and if you have anything that you want, I will say that the Canva team is very responsive. So in a very polite manner, obviously, um, feel free to reach out and, and shoot their support team uh, an email and saying, hey, you know, love your tool, would be great if you could add this for me and maybe explain why and say, you know, either way, thanks. And just because the whole idea, because I do software development for my day job, um, the more people who ask for a feature, the faster it moves up the list. So if there's something that you really wanted from Canva, it doesn't hurt to shoot them, a, you know, don't make, don't hound them about it, but shoot them an email and say, hey, I would really like to see this there because they are very responsive and they do react to those kinds of things. They are listening to us. So speak up. Okay. So the other thing, since this is December, um, we're all trying to get a lot of content out, right? And we all have those moments where it's like, okay, I need to post on my blog. I need to do a social post. I need to do, and then your brain just kind of locks up with everything else that you're trying to do. Now, of course, you probably have pre-scheduled things because we've talked about that in the past. You can go check those videos out. Um, but you want to do those on the fly things too. And sometimes it's easy because the idea just pops in your head and you're good to go. And sometimes you're just like a uh, blank slate. So I created this list for myself for those moments when I want to get something out a little more spontaneously, but I kept running into that wall. Um, and the whole point here is that you want to keep moving. You want to keep getting things done. You don't want this to turn into a time suck. So I created this list of 130 content ideas that I was just using for myself, shared it with a couple of friends who were feeling the similar pain. They found it helpful. So now I'm making it available to everybody. Okay. So you go to yourtechcoach.net forward slash content ideas. It's 130 content ideas. Just flip through it. Pick one. Uh, pick one at random. They are generic, right? They're not just for technology, um, but it will help you get over that hump. So please don't be shy, reach out, use it, make use of it. The, the reason that this is working for me and my friends is because it is generic. So it gives you the idea, but then you're going to apply your own experience, your own content, your own area of expertise to it. And that in and of itself is going to make it special and unique. So go ahead, make use of it. Don't add to your stress. I'm here to try to reduce some of the stress wherever I can. Okay. Now, not only can you use the drawing tool on an image, right? You can actually just do things from scratch as well. So if you wanted to just come in, if you are a from scratch kind of person, um, you could come in here and say, we go to the home and let's just do, let's say Instagram posts. There's usually a blank. And if there isn't a blank, we can just do one. Oh, okay, so let's go here and do all right. Why is this not cooperating? Okay, here if we do a custom size, I bet that will. Here, let's do that. There we go. We're blank. So you can, you know, just from in here, start off completely blank. And, you know, hopefully you're and do whatever it is from scratch that you want to do. Uh, let's do this. I don't know, ears. <laughs> you get the idea. So you can start off completely from scratch. You don't have to start with anything and you can do this, or you could come in and you can, you know, use your own uploads, right? If you've got some piece of art that you've already used, uh, let's see, what have I got? All right. So, I'm just going to cover this up. I mean, normally you would do this the right way, but let's say, you know, I was going to do this and then I wanted to draw on top of this. Like th this is all about whatever it is 
that your brain has sparked. Let's make that go away. Um, so you could come in here and maybe say, you know, hello, <laughs> right? It's all about whatever, whatever your goal is, you can use this with because the nice thing about Canva is when it has these tools, it makes it work across everything. So if, for example, if you're creating um, things that you're selling, right? If you're creating like mugs or notepads or whatever, you can use this for that kind of stuff. However, and this is the cool thing in my book is you can use this with video. So let me just show you, I'm going to create a really quick and, and dirty one. And in the process of doing this, I may be telling you something that maybe you didn't know before. Um, let me see if can I go here. You can use this with video. And did you know, by the way, you can do mobile video in Canva. I know, I know. Of course you can do, you know, your standard, you know, landscape video, but let's have some fun, right? So we're going to come here and I uploaded just a strange little video. Okay, so I'm going to drag this in. Oops. It's the right size. I don't know why it didn't click in. Probably I, I did something wrong when I selected it. So this is just a little piece of video that I did at the back of my studio here. It, it, it's actually the, that corner back there. Um, just for the purposes of showing you this, because again, you have to kind of think ahead a little bit about what you want to do, right? So I've got this video and it's just, you know, panning across some of the stuff that I have on the set. So let's say that I wanted to, when it got here to the typewriter, I wanted to draw a circle around that or an, put an arrow on it or something like that. I could certainly just come in here and say draw and let me see I'm gonna pick a marker and maybe I'm gonna pick red because I got a lot of color going on here and I can draw some squiggles right the thing is that this is now going to have oh I didn't say done um, you have to remember to hit done doesn't apply it until you do which is part of me getting used to the new workflow but you see like this is showing it all the way across now that may be your goal which is totally fine but if this is not your goal then that's fine too. You just come back and delete it. This is where you're going to want to scrub through and find that part of the video that you want this to be a part of. So let's say like, let's say I want it to be right here. No, I want it to be a little farther along. And you can, by the way, if you didn't know, you can actually extend this if you want to like see more. Okay, you're going to make, oh, because I've got it, I've got it fully extended. So then you can zoom in. <laughs> And sometimes that makes it easier if you're trying to pick a particular frame. Oh, well, look at that. See, it just landed on the right one. So let's say this is the one that I want. So I'm going to go a little bit before this. Just a teensy tiny bit. Let me grab my stylus for this. Okay. And then right there, a little bit farther. Okay. Then I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say split. Because the key here, so the trick to using the drawing tools in a video is to just pick out the frame or frames that you want that particular hand drawing to show up and, and not the rest. So you're going to split out the pieces, the couple of frames that you do want it to be on to draw on. And that way the ones before and after it won't have it. And you can do this as many times as you want in the video if you want to do different things. I'm just going to show you one just to kind of get the concept across. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to come a couple of frames later here. Okay. And I want it be, I want it pretty much to be just when it's in the main focus. So it's only going to be, you know, a frame or so. Come on. Come on. You can do this. All right. Let's say, let's say right, right about here. All right, and then again, I'm going to do the split. Okay, and then I'm going to put the timeline, I keep saying cursor, but it's a timeline. We're talking video now, here. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and, oh, let's pick my favorite glow. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to say done. Hopefully this worked, let's find out. So we're moving, no drawing, no drawing, no drawing, and then drawing. Now, obviously you would, you would rework this and you would, you know, 
to find, you know, refine it and you wouldn't be trying to multitask while you're doing this, but that's the concept behind it. So you're going to go in, you're going to edit, you're going to um, split out the parts of the video, right? Where you want to do something, you're going to do the split before and after, and then you're going to just go into that, you put the time head, um, the time marker in the video, you're going to put that in the video, the part of the video that you want to add the, the hand drawing to, do it, make sure you say done, because that's going to apply it to that section of video, and then it will be there, and you can go in and you can adjust this, you know, you can use this for as many different places in the video as you like, and oh yeah, by the way, we've just talked about the fact that as a bonus tip for this video, yes, you can actually create your TikToks here, or you can enhance your TikTok videos in here, not just TikTok, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram, you know, all, all of the places where you might be doing um, vertical video. If you are doing vertical video, you can edit those here as well as you can edit in, you can edit the regular ones. Now I did promise, and so I'm gonna follow through with that. I'm gonna show you that, yes, this is stuff that you can also do in the free version. So let me switch over uh, to this one. See, I even did a different layout to really drive home the fact that it's different because really the difference between the two is, is not, evident just by looking at it, right? So I'm going to flip between them. So this is what it looks like on my desktop as a desktop app. And this is it in the browser. It really looks the same as far as I'm concerned. Um, and by the way, the desktop uh, version of it is um, Windows and iOS. So we're both all covered. So this version that we're looking at right now, this is my free account. And I can prove that to you. Let me see, how can I prove that to you quickly? Uh, by going into the brand kit and see that it's telling me to upgrade. Okay, now if I come back to my paid version, uh, you can see that I have started setting up my brand kit because brand kit is something that is part of the paid version. So I'm just doing this to show you that yes, these are two different versions. Okay, so for here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna grab something real quick. Here, we'll do just a regular, well, I'm gonna do a video because that takes longer. Let's do social media. Let's do a Facebook post this time. Now I've already installed the app in this one, so we won't go through that. Um, let's try to pick something a little generic. Uh, let's see, do we have something? Seek excitement. Okay, yes, beach, is, beach sounds good to me. No, nope, not birthday, beach. Ah, now you see that here, here's more proof that this is my... Uh, my free account because that particular image is paid. So let me just delete that. Let's find something that's completely free. Uh, delete. delete. I could just change the image, but you know, I'm trying to do fast and I'm probably making it slower as we go. Uh, let's see, let's just grab something, something quick. I really just want something generic. The time is now, that's free. Okay, there we go. The time is now, oh, this is an Earth Day thing. Okay, so I'm planning ahead. So here we go. Let's say that I've already gone in and I've customized it to make it more for my business, right? Put my logo on it, all that kind of stuff. By the way, I've noticed people are not using their logos as much as they should be in social media. Don't forget to use your logo. Use your branding. All right, anyway, sorry. And then we're gonna come to beta, which I already had installed. Um, if you're jumping in late, I already showed you in the beginning of the video how to install this. So you can come in here, you're gonna pick your pen, you're gonna pick your size. Uh, transparency, I'm gonna pick red. And so maybe we wanted to really emphasize now, eh, I did not do a good job with that. So let's say cancel and do it again. Marker red, maybe I need to make the size a little smaller or maybe we're gonna do it this way. Maybe we'll go. Okay, I mean, that's not a great, <laughs> there we go. I'll get carried away, right? Obviously, you're going to do something much better than this, but the point is, this is a free account, and I, I'm able to do this. Oh, I forgot to show you the eraser. Okay, so here's a good point. All right, so let me just grab, let me grab, oh, you know what, let's grab the highlighter. Um, Actually, here, this will be fun. Let's do this. We're going to grab the highlighter. We're going to grab red. Okay, and I'm going to do this, right, because I decided I really wanted to make this the point. And then I do this. Sorry, a little art therapy here. Um, so then I do this and I'm like, ah, you know, I don't, maybe that's not, maybe that's overplaying it, right? So you can come here to the eraser and maybe you can take this, uh, here, let's make the eraser bigger so it doesn't take all night. Okay, 
and then maybe I come back to the highlighter, which should still have the same settings, yes? And... well, you get the idea. So you have an eraser, which is another thing that I forgot to mention. Um, or, you know, if you wanted it to be maybe just around the word, you know, you could do this kind of thing and make it kind of a reveal. Again, the point is, lots of options, more than you would think when you just look at this and say, hmm, there's only a couple of things here. Uh, let's do that. Anyway, I'm not doing this for real. I don't know why I'm paying so much attention to it, but, uh, you know, I can't help myself. Uh, but yeah, so if you needed to just, re you know, remove something and didn't want to restart, you totally can do that. Here, let's round this off a little bit. You get the idea. So you do have an eraser, and then, of course, when we do done, now this is this, and so I could make this bigger or smaller. So maybe I decided, no, I do want the whole word. So you've got options. You have options, whether you're on the free account or the paid account, go in, try it. That's the point with these kinds of things is experiment with it. See what you like, see what you don't like. Keep doing the things you like. Don't do the things you don't like and put it to work. Keep an eye on it because you will see over time all these things that are on the side here. We'll do this one. Um, you know, all, all these options that are over here on the left side will start to expand. You will start to see other things show up. So just keep an eye on that and put it to work for you. Make sure that this is something that uh, you at least try. Okay, if it doesn't... Editorial comments from the peanut gallery. Uh, if it's not something that works for you, that's fine because Canva is full of other tools that you can use, but at least gives us a try. Try it in a couple of different ways. See, you know, where maybe it will work or it won't work. Um, and, and just play with it. Have fun with it. That's where the creativity comes from. That's where that next idea is going to come from is give yourself the luxury of trying these things. You're not going to hurt anything, right? Worst comes to worst, you throw it out and you start over. You delete that part of it and you start over. Don't save it, whatever it is. Um, but th there's a lot that you can do with it and it is eye-catching, it's fun, and it can really help boost your particular content up to that next level. All right? So, um, as always, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, comments, if you have a topic you want me to cover or dive deeper in, um, go ahead and reach out at yourtechcoach.net. There's a contact form there. Let me know. You can also comment. Um, I do come back and read the comments and respond. It may take me a day or two, but I do get back to them. Um, so go ahead and share your ideas in there. Um, and if you have a particular problem that you need help with or you need advice on, again, you can go here and fill out the form. All I ask is that you make sure that you give me a way to get back in touch with you. Otherwise, all I can do is save it for the next show, which is fine by me. But I feel bad. Sometimes people ask for help, but then they don't tell me how to reach out to them and I don't know who they are. Um, and sometimes it's time sensitive. So I'd just like to remind everybody that if you need that kind of help, just make sure you give me, uh, you know, an email address or something. Okay. All right, everybody go have fun with the new Canva functionality. Um, and we will talk again soon. Bye. Thank you.